Greetings fellow students and Hilda from the research class. This is Mark Mayo in Sacramento right now. I couldn't make it to class tonight so I pre-recorded this so that I could make my presentation along with Rosie on survey methods. My portion of the report or presentation for tonight is on questionnaires. So let's get started. Questionnaires in language surveys provide three types of information. First, factual, second, behavioral, and third, attitudinal. Factual information includes name, age, proficiency, background of respondent, etc. Behavioral includes what students or teachers regularly do in terms of language learning or teaching. And attitudinal includes opinions, beliefs, or interests of teachers or learners. The advantage of doing questionnaires in language surveys is that it's a very efficient means to gather a good deal of information in a short time and it doesn't cost very much. It's also an effective way for teachers to find out more about the background, habits, and preferences of their students, which of course the researcher can then use in curriculum development. There are a couple of disadvantages though, and they should be pointed out. One is that teachers and students can provide unreliable information. Why would they do that? Well, because if they believe that that's what they should report, then they may be tempted to. Have you ever answered a questionnaire circling a number response wishing you could explain why you answered it that way? That is an example of another disadvantage of questionnaires. They can result in superficial or simple responses, lacking the deeper information about why the answer was what it was. Designing a survey, first of all, needs to start with selecting respondents. When determining who will take the survey, it's important to get a random sample. And McKay suggests four steps to do this, but then adds that sometimes it's difficult to get a truly random sample. In this case, a researcher can use a sample of convenience, or in other words, participants that they're able to get access to, which represents the larger population. When you've decided who you want to give your questionnaire to, the next step is to write the questions. There are two types of questions, close-ended and open-ended. In the close-ended questions, the respondent chooses one of several specified answers. And we've all seen these. The answers can take several different forms, which include true, false, and you circle the one that you agree with, yes, no, or also a Likert scale, which typically asks respondents to rate something on a scale which is represented by a number you know, one to five, etc., with each number meaning something different. Open-ended questions should be used very sparingly on a questionnaire. If you do use them, they are the least intrusive when placed toward the end of the questionnaire. And of course, these are the kinds of questions where respondents write their own answers. There are graphic considerations as well in a questionnaire. It should be designed to be visually appealing give it a clear, logical, and well-marked structure. It should be no more than four pages long, if you use paper, and take 30 minutes to finish. It's also become popular in the last few years to put a questionnaire online, but whether using paper or the internet, an uncluttered visual presentation is important. There are several sections of a questionnaire as well that are, are important in the graphic considerations, the first section should be a short statement of purpose. In the initial statement of purpose, state the questionnaire topic, its importance, and that all responses will be kept confidential. Also, request that the answers be honest, and this will help to take care of the one of the disadvantages of questionnaires that was mentioned a moment ago. The next section is the instruction section, and that should tell the respondents what they should do and give an example of how to answer a question, not just tell them how, but give an actual example. Then comes the question section itself. And after the question section, be certain to thank respondents for their participation at the end. The next step after you have the questions all composed is to do a pilot questionnaire. Before you distribute your questionnaire to the masses, start out with a small scale project, which is called a pilot project. Give this to small numbers of respondents who are similar to the group you'll be surveying. And that way you can find out what problems exist in clarity of directions and which items might be confusing. Correct the weaknesses 
and you're almost ready to go. The only thing you need to check now is the reliability of your survey. You want to give the same questionnaire to the same individuals on two different occasions uh, to use one of the methods of checking reliability. That way, if they answer similarly both times, you know that there is a high degree of reliability. Another method is to include several items that ask similar questions, but in different ways. Either method you choose, you can check to see how consistently the respondents have answered the questions to check your reliability. Once that's done, distribute your questionnaire to all of the respondents that you want. Get the results back when they're done and compile the results. It's best to use statistical analysis to understand the results. And this includes frequency of how many responses answered a certain way, percentages, and also central tendencies, which gets into mathematical statistics pretty heavily using the mean, the mode, and the median. You can then uh, summarize your findings using graphs and charts, but uh, when you write your summary report, don't overgeneralize. Uh, McKay gives a warning to preface any conclusions that apply to your findings uh, to your group of respondents only, and not to everyone. For example, you'd want to use a preface of, the students in this survey group appear to, and then finish the sentence with whatever they appear to. So in summary, when a questionnaire is designed effectively, it is a very useful tool in compiling information on the background, behavior, and attitudes of your respondents.